Hello folks, I'm Grimith, and this is Rogue State, a geopolitical strategy game. I've put 15 hours into the game, spread across uh, three playthroughs and some change. All three playthroughs were successes. First, second, and third. This fourth one here, uh, well, uh, I selected a scenario which started me with a weapon of mass destruction and I used it to destroy the world. <laughs> Pretty fun. Uh, Rogue State's an alright game. Uh, it follows a similar vein to a Hidden Agenda, which I recorded for the channel what, back in 2012. I did know that game very well. Uh, this game has a significantly better user interface, and I think it's far more accessible uh, for folks these days. Although, I will say that I do find the game, well, in one sense easy, in another sense highly variable. Uh, the game is immensely dependent on random event chains, like King of Dragon Pass. And there's even... Well, I will say, uh, this video uh, will serve as a tutorial to acclimate you folks to the game. I think the game has a small learning curve, uh, but not all of you are strategically inclined like I am. Game has charm. It's alright enough. Anyway, let's go ahead and make tutorial man here. Select Babby normal difficulty. I've played one game on normal, two games on hard. I use the unstable element scenario, which has nuclear weapons. Haven't tried out Capitalist Playground yet. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. But for now, tutorial time. We're going live in three, two, one. For those just joining us, we are fortunate to have an audience today with our glorious leader. Excellency, last week we experienced the conclusion of the trial of the tyrant King Solomon, with his execution scheduled for next Friday. With the Great Revolution finally concluded, what will the future political structure of the People's Republic of Bisenji finally look like? Well, Zara, King Solomon was a corrupt and sadistic man. Under his rule, our people served while he sold away our most sacred objects to pay for his own luxuries. Hundreds of thousands of souls died under his tyranny, yet he was tolerated by the American imperialists. His death will give us closure, but our work is only just beginning. The people's revolution is never really over. We must rebuild this country from the ashes, reform it. The Revolutionary Council has put me in charge of the transitional government for the next five years to maintain order while a new constitution is drafted. One that meets the needs of all the people. Many were expecting your brother Farouk would be named by the Revolutionary Council as the interim leader of Besenji. What role will he have in the transitional government? Farouk is popular to be certain and was a fellow patriot of the revolution. He will be given an appropriate role in my cabinet. It is often said that the Americans are suspicious of our transitional government and that you face a great deal of pressure from domestic interests seeking reforms. Our first priority is, of course, reconstruction. The American imperialists are of no concern at this time. Governance is not an easy task, but I assure the people that we will build a stronger Basenji together. Thank you again for your time, Excellency. It is a pleasure, Zara. All right. Rogue state indeed. Now, in order to start us off here, the first uh well the first choices we have to make involve selecting our cabinet. There are 5 uh ministerial uh positions, yet only 4 possible ministers. Which means that uh, you need to leave a field unfilled. Uh, these ministers can change. Uh, there is an event chain that can kill one. And you are capable of firing them. Uh, should you uh, no longer desire their services. At the risk of severely upsetting their faction. Now uh, there is one individual whom you cannot fire or really touch. And that is your brother, Farouk. Uh, Farouk is an incredibly powerful individual. You cannot oust him from power. Uh, he's too well entrenched and too highly connected. You have to give him one of the minister positions, and he is going to harm you 
in some fashion, depending on which position you give him. Now, I've experimented uh, with two of the possible minister positions giving him to Farouk. Uh, the first time I played was the foreign minister position, uh, which uh, doesn't give you any of the green stuff and gives you the red stuff, uh, harming my relationship with Americans. And then uh, for my second and third playthroughs, I made him the intelligence minister, uh, which is like intelligence breakthroughs so that you know more stuff about the people who are around you. And that turned out all right. Uh, but this is tutorial, uh, but just to give you a sense, I'm probably just going to keep with that rather than experimenting anymore. I liked it. There's a finance minister, minister that I particularly enjoy. There's a defense minister whom I also find useful. Now the choice here between foreign minister and communications minister, I've gone without the foreign minister before. Uh, but my goodness. I really do enjoy that. I've also gone without Communications Minister before. And I have to say that I would rather have Communications Minister over... Oh, that's hard to say. Well, doesn't matter for tutorialing purposes. Let's just go ahead and roll with this. That way I can teach you folks how to play the game. First time in the big chair. Now there is a convenient tutorial function. Uh, there's a small guide in the game. And you have a personal advisor who pops up to explain some actions that you can take during your first turn, which is what this entire video is going to be devoted to, okay? Excellency, my name is Tariq Badur. As Parliamentary Chief of Protocol, it is my duty to ensure that your instructions reach our parliamentarians. I trust you have settled into your new office? May I offer some suggestions on our first steps to restoring order to Vajinji? Voice acting in the game isn't bad. Music's highly forgettable. Uh, whenever I've played this game, mostly I just have my own stuff running in the background. But since this is going to be going up on YouTube, uh, enjoy. Let's uh, go ahead and begin tutorial with uh, yes. our wonderful Excellent. chief of protocol. Start, there are two units of currency to be concerned with. One is our treasury fund. And the other is the loyalty of our parliament. We will need to rebuild basic infrastructure to begin. Click on the state infrastructure button. Alright, or I could press F5, but we'll just click on the build infrastructure button. We walk around our office. The people are without water and sewage, and it will cost us treasury funds to restore it. When you're ready, click on the restore water and sewage icon. Okay, so in order for you to build a variety of improvements that are located in this game, you must first rebuild your nation after the Glorious Revolution, uh, proceeding through all of these steps. And once you've done so, then you can specialize the nation with many other building types. But you can't do any of that until you rebuild. So, we'll go ahead and restore water and sewage to the people. And uh, go ahead and get foreign aid workers here. Which requires you to make an immediate policy decision... Uh, allowing you to prioritize certain things to customize your build path. A foreign aid worker's medical team I've never allowed uh, decreases healthcare costs. Uh, they're typically 5 million, and so that'll reduce it to 2 million. Never selected this in any of the playthroughs I've done. This would save you, well, if the game actually went 5 years, could save you $100 million, $180 million over the course of the game. But I much prefer the second option here, that gets military approval, and uh, reduces the time limits here on reconstructing. So you can have these done much quicker, because there's a turn requirement on these options. I enjoy rebuilding the nation faster, because it gets us access to resources that we can sell. I think that ultimately pays off in the long run. So we'll choose that, and then restore power to the people. That icon down there corresponds with our treasury. Neat. So we can close this option, take a look at the policies. And now click on the policies button. Also, a few gripes that I have. I might as well get this out of the way. For starters, the only way to access volume stuff, these options, is when you're in the game. An option for this does not exist in the main menu. I find that to be a flaw of the game. Another problem is that the game does feature several bugs, one of which being that the interface does not always update properly. Uh, it's done so now just fine, uh, but one thing it doesn't really do is, like, showcase 
how much your income changes, uh, which is highly unfortunate, even whenever you're making decisions during a turn. Anyway, let's go to our policies. You can speed all this stuff up. You don't have to watch people walking and interacting with objects, but I enjoy it. So this is a policy screen. If you're familiar with the Democracy series of games, you'll have some sense of the <laughs> policy making uh, that you can do. Uh, but yes, this is a simplified version of uh, what you would find in the Democracy series of games. And the tutorial is suggesting that we implement a minimum wage. As well as permitting a free trade zone. Trade zone. There we go. So, I'll uh, go ahead and explain uh, these options uh, while I'm in here. Uh, because once I close out of this, it consumes one of my available time units for a turn. Uh, typically, you get uh, four actions that you can take uh, during a turn. Uh, so if you change one policy, if there are any other policies you want to change, you better do them. Yeah, because if you click out of this and then decide, oh shit, there's another policy I wanted to change, you'll have to spend another time unit coming back in here to fix it. You have four factions in this game. Patriots, Capitalists, Fundamentalists, and Liberals. And these policies can help, well, you mollify certain factions, or <laughs> if you really want to upset them, you can upset certain factions too. Uh, for minimum wage things and different settings for which, that will control different values. Uh, you have a closed circuit television surveillance, which you can either enable or disable. You have alcohol policy, which has several different options. Homeless shelters, a free trade zone, uh, week of prayer, you have the police budget, mass transit, a temporary foreign worker policy, legalized gambling, a disaster relief fund, uh, which... Uh, takes your money and uh, puts it into a separate pool that you can use during events for disasters. And it's more efficient to use things from the disaster preparation pool than it is your own treasury. You have the disabled services grant, you have prosecution budget, legalized unionization, death penalty, and school funding. And down here uh, describes some various modifiers, uh, pros and cons, uh, depending on the current state of... Uh, these big diamond things. For, say, for example, I have a stagnant economy which lowers the approval of my capitalists. Uh, I haven't gotten approval with these folks too far down. Uh, I think the lowest I've seen, uh, when you start on high difficult uh, and hard difficulty, they, they can, their approval ratings start in like the 40s, basically. And I've seen a dip a bit below that. I don't know how bad it is if one of these factions really hates your guts. But I imagine it's bad. Anyway, tutorial aim. You can see we've consumed two of our four possible actions down there in the bottom right corner. Uh, the coloring and shading will change as uh, we take actions. There's no harm in just looking at something, um, but if you alter anything in that something, uh, that's when a time unit is consumed. Let's go into the treasury now. And uh, our good old guide here encourages us to increase taxes. Yes, export economy. Highly useful. Also, this is one of the most useful screens in the entire game. This is the Swiss bank account, like Tropico, if you've ever played Tropico, where you can uh, swindle the government, uh, your own government, and like uh, funnel money. Uh, into an offshore bank account, which increases your final score, which increases the amount of experience points that you earn, which you can use to unlock additional gameplay modes. What did he want us to do next? Most actions in the game cost time points. There are four time points in each turn. The tutorial broke a little there. Available can be seen on the clock in the bottom right hand corner. I preempted him. Sorry. When all four time points are consumed, the turn ends and an event occurs. Events are rarely good news. Most actions, including building infrastructure, changing policies, calling neighbors, and moving military units, will cost time points. When our industries are restored in the state infrastructure menu, Bajinji will receive two resources. 
resources will appear here, in the resource menu. I suggest exporting goods that other countries will pay well for, and importing goods necessary to create manufacturing bonuses. Manufacturing bonuses are rewards conferred for having certain combinations of goods in your country, either produced domestically or imported from neighbors. Click on the resource menu that was just highlighted to see all the possible manufacturing bonuses. Now, I really haven't made use of that of manufacturing bonuses in this game. Uh, but it does have this possibility. Um, you get two resources in your nation uh, whenever you finally like restore the infrastructure. Uh, when you click that option in reconstruction. And as far as I'm aware, those two resources are randomly picked from all available resources. Uh, and the nations around you also have their resources randomly generated. Um, as a result, you could end up with uh, one nation with whom you cannot trade because they have the same resources as you do. Uh, oil, uh, in my opinion, is the most valuable one because it increases relationship with the United States and it changes the ambassador's dialogue a little, which is amusing. I, yeah, again, as noted, I really haven't gone for any of these resource bonuses. I think they're too much of a drain on the economy, and those approval bonuses can be gotten in other ways. Um, at least, that's, that's my opinion. Keep your friends close, and your enemies closer. The people love Farouk, so you need to keep him in your regime. But we should keep a close eye on the loyalty of your parliamentarians. When faction approval drops, when your cabinet members get displeased, or when we start to lose wars or run out of funds, that's when our parliamentarians' loyalties shift. Their loyalty is represented with loyalty points, that other currency. If you start seeing loyalty points drop, then something is seriously wrong with Pajinji. If loyalty falls too low, Farouk may attempt to push us out of power. For now, let's take a closer look at the Parliament window. Sure! Parliament and Cabinet. Our glorious leader walks on over to the wall here to stare at the Parliament board. Uh, every now and then, uh, the Cabinet members will have requests. I will say that on hard difficulty, these requests can be highly unreasonable, if not impossible to achieve. Um, and the last playthrough that I did, which starts you with a weapon of mass destruction, uh, the United States will never play ball with you. Um, they won't attack you or try to oust you from power, but uh, you having nuclear capabilities really upsets them. And one of my ministers was like, Hey, could you have the President of the United States visit us? And I was like, You son of a bitch. Ensure Basinji is safe and stable, and we will have nothing to worry about. So there's Farouk there. Uh, he will always be at 0% approval. Um, in five years, or I've noticed on hard difficulty, six years? I'm not sure what that's all about, but that's what it's been for me. Uh, Farouk will stage a coup, and the game does not disguise that from you. The ultimate goal is, at the end of the game, he's going to attempt to overthrow you. He's really upset about not being put in this position for power, and he's highly ambitious. Think Crusader Kings when you have an ambitious vassal. Only I can't do anything about this ambitious vassal other than prepare for his inevitable attempt to overthrow me. Uh, the other capitalists here, or well, rather, excuse me, the other uh, ministers here, we can interact with, we can fire them. Uh, when they have requests, they'll pop up some text down here, and if we successfully complete those, we'll get reward cards, which will appear in this middle space here. And those reward cards depend, I think, upon what they minister over, and which faction they serve. They can give you like a bonus relationship for the faction and other sort of goodies. Uh, we have loyalty points. Um, I imagine if those get too low, then an early coup is staged. Uh, but if those get too high, you'll have banked loyalty points, which you could spend for all manners of goodies and prizes. They're pretty awesome, particularly that inspired volunteers thing down at the bottom. I've also, well, I've made use out of most of these. Very lovely, very lovely, that. I'll leave you to it now, Excellency. This is not everything there is to see and do, but with luck, you will figure out the rest yourself. You can always hit the buzzer if you are in need of a more fulsome report of the health of our beloved country. For now, I suggest advancing to the next turn sooner by clicking on the clock. I have every confidence in your leadership, Excellency. 
Yay. He's got confidence in me. Also, foam. Who could possibly be calling me at this time of day? Greetings, Your Excellency. I am Prime Minister Amal Starkos, and on behalf of Boethia, I wanted to be the first to welcome the liberation of the People's Republic of Provinci from the tyranny of the Salman family. The Salman regime was a threat to the whole region. That is why we provided your rebellion with weaponry and training necessary to overthrow the tyrant. Once the transitional government has restored Persinci's infrastructure and industry, let us work towards restoring our trade relationship. Do not hesitate to contact me if there is any way Boethia can be of assistance to you. Thank you for your call. I am certain our two great nations will work together to bring great prosperity to the region. There is much work to be done, but I am grateful for your country's support. All right, so our friend rung us up for free. That is the first time I've seen the joke option up here. All right, I can tell a joke. Let's tell a joke. What's the best part about living in Switzerland? Not sure, but the flag is a big plus. Tough crowd. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Boethia man no sold that shit. Okay. So, we were called. We could talk about issues. And the efficacy of your issue discussion depends on whom you're speaking with. Uh, you have three bordering nations, and each of these individuals care about different things. Intelligence reports can help you determine that. Also, it seems as if there's some consistency between uh, playthroughs. Or maybe it's just been me lucky, and there is no consistency on the personalities of uh, these various uh, faction leaders. I presume that's just so that the voice actors didn't have to record even more lines. Also, this is a very platonic and lovely line here. We would like to deepen the long-standing cooperation that exists between our two nations. How fortunate! We too have been hoping to strengthen the long-standing friendship between our two great nations. Yeah! Now we can also discuss trade options, and it seems that Boethia here is exporting film and television products and electronics. Apologies. But I must go. Let us speak again later. Goodbye. But we don't much care about any of that right now. This is tutorial land. And that didn't actually consume one of our turn units, because we were the ones who were being called. And that was rather lovely. So, pressing F4 here, or pushing that buzzer, we'll summon our parliamentary advisor. Come chat us. Excellency, <laughs> about, how may I be of service? You know, things. Like, do I still have the confidence of our parliament? How is our international relationship? Any news from the polling agency? How is the mood for people? Thanks, that's all for now. Which has some stand by the window, or you can leave now. Thanks, that's all for now. He'll go over there to walk, so that we don't have to buzz him in again. Uh, this option enables the build infrastructure thing again. This picks up the phone. <laughs> oh good, Chicken Stan is here again. Oh, that's great. Axtigen, I've seen him once. I've seen Boethia like three times. And uh, this... Ambassador of the United States of America, whom I have never really gotten to enjoy in a dialogue format, because really the only time I had an option to uh, was when I w had a weapon of mass destruction. Down here is where you can access their intel. There's a few other places for you to access intel, so that you can do some prep work before you call one of them, so that you know the right dialogue options that'll help you out here. Here's a look at the regional map, which shows, uh, well, we're in the middle, because of course we are. Boethi over here, Chickenistan over there, and Axtijan. And we can see the resources that they have. Uh, Axtijan has the very powerful oil resource. And Chickenistan has uh, wonderful little ingots there. And we can change border security. We can sell weaponry. And uh, if we had oil, uh, we could construct oil pipelines. Uh, we can construct an oil pipeline to someone who has oil. Uh, which expends money in the short term for a longer term game. Uh, the prices of resources fluctuate uh, throughout the game, and so 
doing that with oil instead of selling the resource can be more profitable there. Uh, like Civilization games, like Civ 4 or Civ 5, uh, you effectively only have one copy of a resource, and once you sell it, then you can't use it. You can't sell it to someone else. I'm reading the newspaper here. Uh, we'll have a lovely little bur blurbs uh, depending on events that transpire uh, throughout the game. We also have wonderful adverts there at the top. Like extreme giraffe tea, and uh, we have the worst customer service in all the Republic of Bazenji. Accessing the portrait or the painting there uh, gives us access to unlockables, which I have most of. A comedian, charmer, which I've never gotten to use. A polyglot, which <laughs> makes us fluent in the native language of Chickenistan, with whom I have spoken. Uh, petroleum theocracy, which I haven't unlocked. Catalyst playground, which I just unlocked. Unstable Elements, um, which uh, gives you access to a nuclear weapon, a game start, and then Hermit Kingdom. Now, these unlockables say a small chance. I think that in prior versions of Rogue State, um, you uh, were not able to just select the scenario straight up. Thankfully, you are able to do so in this current version, which I think is 1.3. 1. Now, Sitting on the couch is an encyclopedia, which gives you some basic history about, like, the nations around you, current situation, and your brother, Farouk. Who is, uh, certainly the most dangerous man in the entire wonderful nation of Basenji. Yes, we are stuck with each other. Rather terrifying, that. Okay, so the goal of this game is to survive uh, the entire length of the transitional government and then to survive the inevitable coup attempt. Wonderful manual here uh, will explain that is to maintain power for at least 60 turns, which represents five years. If you prevail, you can either transition a country to a full democracy or hold on to power for yourself indefinitely. I've never seen any options to suggest anything like that of the sort. I've... I haven't seen an option that allows me to hold on to power for myself indefinitely. Wouldn't mind that. <laughs> and this little guide has various things that you can flip through, which teaches you about the interface. But, eh, you don't have to worry about that, folks. We have another room over here called a Situation Room. Let's go visit it. We'll enjoy the walking animations of the Glorious Leader. I usually skip through those. Yes, an entirely separate room full of things and stuff. We have the general over here, who can tell us about military morale. We can give access to our intelligence reports um, from the screen. Procurement officer uh, allows us to procure new troops, most of whom have upkeep costs, except for a drone type that you can unlock later in the game. And they have varying statistics. Infantry, tank brigade, rocket battery, and a fighter squadron. Ongoing costs there could be pretty rough. You have the clandestine operations, which allows you to start secret projects. Uh, many, which require a clandestine facility. You can have a space program. Giant hydroelectric dam. Great firewall. Assassin brainwashing. And a broken time machine, which at least glitched out for me. Of course, nuclear weapons development. And strategic overview is where you could... Attack people and move your troops. I'll go ahead and show that off. Moving anything on this map uh, will uh, consume that final time unit. Also a trade screen if there's any trade deals currently ongoing, which there aren't. Now before I end this tutorial, one more thing I'm going to show off. Well, there's that. We'll go ahead and show off an event. I reckon. Just to show off the screen. Oof. As uh, our advisor noted, most events in this game are not good news. That is certainly true. There are good events that will give you goodies and bonuses straight up, but many of these things uh, will impact the factions in some form or fashion. You have relationship with the United States of America and the United Nations. The game suggests that having either of these too low will cause them to try and oust you from power unless you have nuclear weapons. 
which case they won't try because you might end the world. We have our three neighbors. Uh, relationships get too low over here and they will attack. And we have our four factions down there at the bottom. Now, these events aren't inherently guaranteed to raise or lower your relations with factions. There's times where you might select an option hoping to get something positive with a faction, but it doesn't change at all. Yet you'll still get the negatives from making that choice. That really frustrates me. Like, I don't care how much that might cleave to real life. It... It makes strategic planning around it. Like, it's not a geopolitical strategy game. It's a geopolitical fucking stab you in the eye game. <laughs> At any rate, uh, this particular event has us either spend uh, 50 million, which we cannot really afford, or uh, eat a relations hit with all these factions down here at the bottom. Or maybe at least liberals. Now, liberals, United Nations. Oh, that sucked. Oh, and uh, the SNG citizens are increasingly identifying as fundamentalists. Neat. One other thing I'll show off is that you can get a closer look at each of the factions within your country, along with suggestions for how you can uh, approve their loyalty. All right, that takes care of Tutorial Man in Tutorial Land. Uh, next time, we're uh, gonna get on proper with the video game. I'm gonna delete Tutorial Man. No one really cares about him. He's dumb. He's dead to me. He served his purposes. Oh, and the game auto-saves. If you want to make, like, separate copies of, like, saves for, like, loading purposes or experimentation purposes, you'll have to go to the folder where the game saves are made and handle that yourself. Get out of my face, tutorial man. You're dead to me.